everyone, it's Nettie from I Hear You. And today I'm going to show you a little bit of the process I take when I'm making my wigs on the sewing machine. Um, so if you're learning to make a wig on the sewing machine for yourself or for a client, um, I hope you can take something from this video. I know how crucial it was for me to find a decent video when I was learning. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. Alright, so I'm going to be using our hair from our Raw Indian Hair Collection. And I'm going to start drawing my guy lines. I already put my closure. I'm using a 4x4 closure and I already sewed it on. Um, if you're learning how to sew on a sewing machine, um, you already know how to do that part. So I just went ahead and skipped that. So I like to draw my lines an inch apart. I like to use the ruler. I like to have rulers on all of my dome heads. It just makes life so much easier. If you just take the time to do that, you'll realize how much easier it is and how much time you're safe. And I like to just start in the middle to draw the lines and then I'll start drawing them across on each side. For this um, particular wig, I'm using um, the raw hair and my bundles are a little bit longer than the others. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make a couple of extra lines just to make sure that I'm fitting all three of those bundles on. So I usually have like between 11 and 12 lines, but for this wig, I'm probably gonna have like about 14 lines. So I'm gonna just go ahead and just continue draw, um, drawing that out. And it all comes with practice, drawing your guidelines. They don't have to be super perfect. Um, they are there to guide you. You will learn how to um, use your lines if you need to um, fix something you'll learn how to maneuver your tracks um, how to lay them properly but they are there as a guide and they are necessary so you want to just make sure that you can get them as um, even as possible um, so your wig could be nice and um, neat when i get to the top i draw them a half an inch apart and i always do this because i always single my bundles at the top i don't use double webs um, at the top of my wigs because I want my wigs to lay um, super flat. So I always use single uh, tracks on the top. So here I am just doubling my webs. I'm going to show a couple of different angles just so you can um, see how your tracks are supposed to lay. So they should be very close to each other but not on top of each other. Uh, use a zigzag stitch to get both the webs together. See my needle is penetrating both of the webs, so they're going into each one, bringing them to make them one unit. So when you're done, the um, track should be nice and flat. That web should be flat, and it should just feel like if it as if it's one track. The way that you see the web now, how you can see the thread and the two bundles join, that's the way you're going to lay the track onto the wig cap when you're sewing. So I always start by just doubling two bundles and then I'll see how it goes. If I need to double um, any of the third bundle, I will. When I get to the end, I'm going to cut the track and then just sew right over that. And go ahead and get yourself one of those open toe presser footers. Those make a world of difference too. I can see exactly what I'm doing. All I have to do is just make sure that my tracks are lined up in between that. See that? I can see exactly what I'm doing. This presser foot I got off of Amazon. Now I'm just applying my wig tag. I have a video showing this process, how I put on my wig tags and sew them on. I also um, provide a vendor of where I got my wig tags from. So you can check that video out if you're looking for um, some wig tags. All right, so now I'm gonna take that track, I'm working with my first bundle, I'm working with my longest bundle, and I'm gonna take it, place it on the wig cap, and get it on the line as close to the edge of it as I possibly can without going over. I don't want any of my bundle hanging off of the cap. And then I'm gonna lower my press of foot, just straighten out my wig cap, and then I'm gonna to start to sew. 
Once I lock in that end, I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to forward stitch again and back stitch a couple times. You see, I'm just readjusting my track just to make sure that it's where it's supposed to be. Make sure that my needle is going over that top track. Make sure that that's being sewn down. The back stitching will lock it in place, but it will also make the ends of your track um, flat onto the cap. So I'm just gonna grab that cap. I like to do that just to give me a little grip um, to guide and while I'm holding the cap and then I'm just um, turning it just to make sure that my track is going in the direction that it needs to go. So I'm not completely like pulling the cap. You'll see that I'm just gripping it. And I just make sure to stay on that line and move the cap the way I need to to follow that curve. When I get to the end, I'm going to back it up a little bit so I can cut the weft. It's good to make sure that you have some sharp um, scissors or some shears. I'm going to cut it at an angle to make sure that there's nothing is hanging over. And then I'm gonna do that back stitching just to make sure that it's flat and secure. I'm gonna cut the string and that's how the first track looks, nice and neat. So now I'm gonna move on to the second um, line. Same thing, I'm going to place that track on there, lay, put my presser foot down. Then we're gonna secure that in and then we're gonna follow the line. And then we're going to smooth out our cap you don't want to pull on it, smooth it out, make sure that it's flat, make sure your line is where it's laying naturally. There we go. So just concentrate on the area where I'm working. I'm not worried about the rest of the cap. Where I'm sewing is where I'm making sure that my cap is smooth to the machine. Lay my track down and sew. Not stretching it, laying it down, making sure that my line is not stretching out. It's natural where it's supposed to be. Smooth it out and just sew it down. That took me a while to grasp the concept of that, but I realized if you pull too much on the cap trying to straighten it out, your tracks will ripple up, they will not lay flat. Cut it at an angle. Secure that in. Do your back stitching. Make sure that that's nice and neat and flat. So one thing that I like to do, especially when I first started, is after every couple tracks, I'll place my um, cap back onto the dome head with my measurements. Put it on there. Make sure that it's fitting correctly. I'll make sure that the cap is still stretching. That I'm not shrinking the cap and that my tracks are laying flat. Okay, so after that second track, I'm gonna go ahead and put my wig comb on as well. So I'm gonna start with a straight stitch going across. You wanna do this super slow, because you will bend, your, your needle will break, it will bend. So you gotta be real careful when putting on your wig combs. I start with a straight stitch, and go across. And then I'm going to back stitch it with a zigzag stitch. Okay. 
and that's it. You have your wick on, the tag on, ready to brand. All right, and then I'm just going to continue to, you know, do the same thing until I get to the top. I want to, I'm going to show you how to curve the tracks when you get up to the top of the um, wig cap. That's important, making sure that you're turning with those curves. I wanted to put this clip in here just showing you how I attach the uh, you know the next bundle when I run out of hair. So here I'm run I ran out of hair. I'm gonna just take that bundle and I'm just gonna slide it underneath my needle, hold it in place, and like push it forward. And then I'm gonna backstitch that just so it can um, lay nice and neat together. And then I'll just continue to stitch. Okay, so this is the last line that's gonna go um, completely around before I do the lines that's going across. And besides the one that's going around the closure. So I'm gonna place that down, do my back stitching. And then you'll see I'm just placing it getting down to that curve. When I get down to that curve, I'm gonna make sure that I start to turn the cap and place my bundle on the line, turn, and just keep doing that until I get all the way around. Straighten out my cap. Okay. And that's it. All the way to the end. Cut. And then back stitch. So now after that, all I do, all I have is the lines left that's going across. And then the last track that's gonna lay um, around the closure. So you can just sew those um, tracks right on those lines that's going across. I do connect them to the um, to the other tracks. So you see, I'm gonna sew all the way to the other track. I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna sew it down. All right, the moment we've been waiting for. So I'm gonna start to sew that last track around the closer. I'm sewing it directly behind it. I do attach the uh, closure to the last track. Make sure that everything is neat and seamless. And that's how it looks. Just gonna cut the extra cap from underneath the lace. And we are done. That's her after I conditioned her. And that's her after I styled her. All right guys, thanks for watching. Until next time.